Welcome to the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast, Ask Anything, Episode 8, where designers and hosts Tom and Tracy Hazard answer your questions about the who, where, why, how, and what of fused filament fabrication. Hi, this is Tracy. And this is Tom. And this is the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast, and this segment is Ask Us Anything. Well, almost anything. (laughs) Well, today's question is um, anonymous. Wow. So, you know, you can go into our hasdesign.com, H-A-Z-Z design.com website, and you go to the Ask Us tab, or you can go on Facebook, our Facebook page at mm-hmm. Design as That's well, right. and uh, you can click on our Speak Byte button. You can ask us a question. So you leave us a voicemail a minute long. You don't have to leave your name, obviously. You can be anonymous, but you can leave our, your name and your website or your profession, your where you live would be great because we'd love to know where you're coming from in the, in the world. And um, and ask us a minute long question or, you know, up to a minute. And um, today's question is really kind of interesting. Well, what is it? It's uh, asking about the fifth generation MakerBot and asking if we've had a lot of smart extruder problems. Uh, I see why they want to be anonymous. I can understand (laughs) that. Well, you know, there's been a lot written in the last six months, at least, about the fifth generation MakerBot printers and problems people have had with smart extruders. Uh, I guess some people had a tremendous amount of difficulty with filament jams. And I don't know how we managed to escape it, but we we got ours and it was pretty, you know, it was a new fifth generation, one of the early ones they were shipping out. About a year ago. About a year ago. Right. And, um, And we got 450 hours on the first smart Smart extruder extruder. now i think that's one thing that i think a lot of people don't know and maybe that's kind of part of the problem is that they really expect a smart extruder to last about 150 hours oh they being maker yeah Yeah, i was shocked to learn that That seems really low i'd be a little annoyed if we only got that that 150 hours out of our smart extruder i I know i would have been very disappointed but uh you know we we did buy the maker printer without asking that question first about how long is the smart extruder extruder expected to last it probably would have been a really good question to ask especially since they emphasized the fact that it was replaceable right because you want to you i mean you need to build that into your cost so like over the years how many hours are you going to print and how many smart extruders are you going to have to go through in replacement right. and how soon should you have a backup in place which was you know kind of our thing so we got 450 out of our first one which i thought right. was really was actually too soon i mean i felt like it was too soon but it you know it's just because we intensely printed right right so but we, until that point, we've had great experience yeah. with our smart extruder, and we got a replacement, and we got another long period of yeah, time. At, at least as much. A, a, probably about the same amount of time yeah. out of that smart extruder. And all the time we're reading about all kinds of problems people are having. So I, we, I can't, It's puzzled us as to yeah. why we don't have the issues. Maybe we thought maybe our environment is a lot more stable here because we're in California and it's really dry. So maybe we don't have, you know, humidity issues because some people had mentioned that as being a problem. But we kind of ruled that out as being an issue. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's we just don't see it. And, uh, you know, the reason that we realized it must have been a significant problem is when MakerBot got in touch with us because we do have their MakerCare yeah. protection plan. It's kind of like Apple Care if you're a Mac guy or, yeah. you know, it's a warranty sort of program you pay extra for when you buy the printer. And we got, you know, uh, a message from MakerBot support that they wanted to replace our smart extruder. Yeah, so we got two new ones because so. we had ordered two and uh, originally. And so we had two, the original one on the machine and our replacement one. And so they gave us two back. And all of a sudden, the thing was running like you wouldn't believe it was running so well. well. It's it's yeah, yeah, it's continued to run well. I mean, they've obviously made some improvements yeah. to it. Uh, I think it's all sort of under the hood. You can't really see yeah. what's going on with it. But there are a few different behavioral characteristics yeah. and, and so it loads. You some, should get in touch with them. You right. know, if you're having problems anonymous, you should definitely get in touch with them because they're trying really hard to make it right. They've done really, I, I think they've done really well by us from a customer service standpoint. They're, well, to the point where I'm wondering how they're making any money on us because they so easily <laughs> replace Let's not mention these, that. Well, they replace these expensive parts pretty quickly. But I think it's made people like us say, this is a good machine. This is a good service company. Well, it's a company that stands behind their product, so that's a good thing. Yeah. So, so. anyway, you should get in touch with them definitely. So if anyone else out there has questions for us, again, hasdesign.com, our website, our Facebook page, our Twitter, yeah, send the, us a question anywhere. Go to the Ask Us page and yeah. you know click that button and, and leave us a message or, or 
drop us a note or a review through one of our other media uh, contacts. That's right. So thanks for listening, and we'll be back in touch again on the next WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast.